In this video, I'm going to walk through the three clients that we talked about in class using different data. First and most importantly, recognize that we're just looking for WX. So I have two assets. Instead of saying Apple and GE, I'm saying asset X and Y. So I'm looking for the weight of X. So there's a formula for the weight of X if a client wants a specific return, which is relatively simple. There's a formula for the weight of X right here which is a little bit more complex that is if you want a specific risk and then there's a formula right here if you want the minimum risk so you need to have three, these three formulas and notice with the client with a specific risk we have plus and minus and that's the quadratic equation. Now I have um, Adobe and Bed Bath & Beyond I'm going to do this slightly differently than what we did in class, but it's the same concept. I'm not going to build a portfolio and let you see it. I'm just going to write here we have um, the asset and we have Adobe and Bed Bath Beyond. So I'm going to do Control C. I'm going to come down here and do this transpose. I'm going to make that flip with the transpose. And then I want a certain return. So my expected return, I'll just call it return. And then my volatility. And so my expected return is equal the average tab. Come over here, period. I note the C3, the colon C3 appear. Control down, close parenthesis, times 12, enter. And then if I copy that down and do this, I can just drag that to there. I like to have all these in, I'm going to have a lot in percent, so I'm just going to go Control Shift 5 for all of this and then go over twice. Now I need to have the volatility equal um, standard deviation. We can do sample. If you have an older version of Excel you have these two. The newer version just an updated formula. Uh, come over here period control down times the square root of 12 Take this down, and again, move it. Ah, I messed that up. I'm going to do it over. Move it back. So I have I need risk-return relationships. So really, I could call this risk if I wanted to. But I'm going to keep the word volatility. I also need the relationship. So I have risk and return. I need relationship, which is a covariance. So equal the covariance. And notice I have the old version of Excel, just COVAR. I'm going to use COVAR S, covariance S, since I use standard deviation S. I have to be consistent. Um, tab, period, control down, comma, period, control down. And here I multiply by 12 to annualize it. Not square root of 12, because this is a variance number. This is a squared number. These are square root numbers. Okay, so now I know all I need to know. I have the risk return in relationship of my assets. So I have client number one. It wants a certain return. So I'm going to just put target return. And I'm going to put this in blue and bold. So control B. And over here, put this in bold. I mean in blue. Maybe like that blue. Uh, let's say I want to return, it's got to be between, without going, without shorting, it's got to be between 4.75 and 13.55. Let's just say 8%. Well, I need to know the weight in um, Adobe. So weight Adobe. I need to know the weight in Bed Bath & Beyond. So weight Bed Bath & Beyond. And then once I have that, I can find my volatility my volatility. So this is going to be equal to, and think back what we had in the first of the video, the return desired minus the return for Y, and you got to keep what's X and Y, so Bed Bath & Beyond, and then this minus this. And that's my weight, and so equal 1 minus that, Here's my weight here. Now the volatility formula. Um, 
And I'll show you this formula written out probably later, but this is what we had on the board uh, before. It's going to be equal. I won't do the square root yet. I'm, if we do invariance, it's going to be equal the weight of Adobe squared times the variance of Adobe, which is its volatility squared, plus the weight of Bed Bath & Beyond squared times volatility squared plus two times the weight of each times the covariance. So that's the variance of my portfolio. I want the volatility just to the square root. All right, so that's client number one with a target return. Now I want to do client number two, and this is going to be a little messier. Client number two. And they're going to have a target, uh, I'm going to say sigma, a target variance or volatility. Then they were going to have certain weights, control C right here, and they're going to have a certain return. All right, so let's put this in uh, bold and blue. And let's just go with like 24.16 because actually it will do equal that point right there. So it should come out with the same weights. But now our formula is a little more complicated, so we need to have an A, a B, and a C. And that's where we had the very first of the video. So for A, um, that's going to be equal to the variance, which is the volatility squared of the first stock, plus the variance of the second stock, minus two times the covariance. So that's A. B is going to be equal to two times the covariance, minus two times the variance for Y. And C is going to be equal to 2 times the, oh, not 2, looking at the wrong thing, it's going to be the variance of Y minus the variance of the portfolio, which is that number squared. So now I have my A, B, and C. Those are, I don't really need those in percents. So I'm just going to put them in two decimals. Those, no, those numbers don't tell me, I can't interpret those at all. I just need to put them into the formula for the weight. All right, so that's going to be the quadratic formula. So I'm going to have equal open parenthesis minus B plus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C. Close that close that divided by 2 times A and equal 1 minus that. So my return should be equal to the return of Adobe times, I mean the weight of Adobe times its return plus the weight here times its return, which is this percent. Let me make that a little bit smaller. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag this over. I should have been locking these down. So let's drag this over. Make sure we get the formula in there right. I was thinking ahead. I would have just locked it down when I did it. But the difference here is I don't have a plus. I have a minus. And this should be referencing... right there, which is my 8%. So those numbers match. Well, if I put it in 12%, 12%, 26, 42, I feel like I have those two right. So now I have client number one and client number two. Now let's look at client number three, which wants the minimum. So here we have the weight, um, Adobe. Here we have the weight, Bed Bath & Beyond. I'm not putting enough B's. Then there is no target return. It's just the return that's given. And then the risk are, I'll just call it the volatility. 
Yeah, I call it sigma before, so I'll say I'll say consistent. Call it sigma. So the formula, again, look back what we had before in the very first page is equal to the variance of y, and it's important to keep the y, what x and y is straight because x in this case is Adobe, y is Bed Bath and Beyond. We could reverse that, but we just have to reverse everything. Minus the covariance divided by sigma x squared plus sigma y squared minus 2 times sigma xy, the covariance. This is going to be equal to 1 minus that. The return, and let me put these all in percent. So the return is equal to the weight times the return of Adobe plus the weight of Bed Bath & Beyond times its return. And Excel likes to, for some reason, I don't know why, add all those decimals. It just does it. Um, the volatility formula, remember what we have right here. Uh, before I do this, I'm going to lock this stuff down. For So I don't have to retype this whole formula. I can copy it. And these little tricks how to do things the fastest way. Oh great. I put this in the wrong spot. Goes right here. Control V. I didn't really want that there. I forgot I had frozen the panes that way. I want it to be right here. Just clean this up. And as you go through Get the formatting right just for yourself because it's going to be helpful for your brain to see it that way. Now these weights need to go down to these weights. Then you have those right and we can just see. Uh, so if we put in like a 9% target return. Yeah, that seems to be perfectly right. So that's how you do the clients one, two, and three. Um, you want to graph this? I'm going to leave graphing to a different video.